And welcome to Mount Zion Baptist Church Sunday School Hour, or let's just say 30 minutes. We're going to spend this time together on this morning continuing the lessons that we have been going through, talking about grace, law, faith, and freedom. We are here located at 60 South Parkway East. To some of you who are joining us for the first time on this morning, our Facebook family and friends, thank you for being with us on this morning. I hope that the majority of you that are part of the Sunday School has, have already read the lesson. I will go through them very quickly because we've got a lot to discuss. It is very interesting and it's picking up from last week, but let me not get into that yet. Let me just read the 15 verses and then we'll dive in together. Thank you so much for joining us on this morning on Facebook Live and in person on today. Today's lesson, we're still in Galatians. The, the reading, the scripture is Galatians 5, 1 through 15. Listen to the word. I'm going to start with verse 1. It says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Ye did not run well who did not hinder. Ye did run well who did not hinder you that you should not obey the truth. This persuasion comes not of him that called you. A little leaven, leaven the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you may, that you will be none otherwise minded, but be, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he is. And I my brothers and sisters, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased? I would that they were even cut off which trouble you. For my brothers and sisters, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 15 says, But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one to the other. I wanted to read the verses so that you can get them in your spirit. We're not going, I'm not going to read them again, but I do want to get into the lesson. Let's delve into it now together and talk about this. Now, when I looked at this and looked back at last week, I'm going, why are we doing this today? Because last week in Galatians chapter 3, it talks about being joint heirs with Christ. Let me do a refresher for you. Galatians chapter 3, verse 21, 29, on last week said, Is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would, not, would have been by the law. But the scripture has continued all under have confined all under sin that the promises by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. This verse doesn't say anything about circumcision, okay? But it says, but before faith came, we were kept under God by the law. We were kept under guard by the law. Kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. That's the punchline right there. In the lesson on this week, and I stopped at verse 23 from Galatians 3.21. The Galatian Jews believed in, they practiced the Old Testament before they converted over to being Christians. They were Christian Jews. They only knew the Old Testament, the Moses law, being circumcised on the eighth day of birth, the males, and we're going to go there. So since this is what they had practiced, this is what they had believed, this is what they had been taught. They felt like that everybody else who came to Christ, who gave their life to Christ, who were seeking salvation, had to do the same thing, whether they were Jews, Greeks, or otherwise. If you were not a Jew, 
but you wanted to believe in Christ. You still needed to do what we did with the old law, and that was to be circumcised. So that's what brings us today. But verse, but Galatians chapter 3 had already refuted that. It talked about the law. It talked about that came before faith. So if it came before faith and faith came then, that means it nullified the law. The law is no more. Oh, well, how can you say that, Reverend Bob? Well, let me give you an example right now. We're going to talk about grace, and we're going to talk about law. Let me show you the difference. Grace is based on faith, but the law is based on works. Grace justifies sinful men, but the law is incapable of resulting in justification. Grace begins and ends in Christ. The law makes Christ nothing. The grace is the way of the spirit, and the law is the way of the flesh. Grace is a blessing. Law is a curse. Grace is God's desired end for his people. The law was intended to be only a means to the end. Grace results in intimacy with Christ. The law results in estrangement from Christ. Grace makes one a son of God and an heir of Christ. The law keeps one a slave. Grace brings liberty, but the law results in bondage. Grace depends on the power of the Holy Spirit, but the law depends on human, eff on human effort. Grace is motivated by love. The law is motivated by pride. Grace centers on the cross of Christ, and the law centers on circumcision, right where we are today. Now, because of what they believe and what they practice and what Genesis chapter 17, verses 7 through 14 says, this is what the Jews believed. Listen to the word of God. It says, verse 7, and I will establish my covenant between me and you. This is God talking and your descendants after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after. This is under the law. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, all the land of Canaan, as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said to Abraham, I've gotten excited. Let me bring it down a little bit. I feel myself running over myself. And God said to Abraham, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and your descendants after you. Every male child among you shall be circumcised, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised, every male child in your generations. He who is born in your house and brought, and bought with money from any foreigner who is not your descendant, they too, shall be circumcised. He who is born in your house and he who is bought with your money must be circumcised, and my covenant shall be in your flesh for everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised male child who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be caught up, cut off from his people. Now, that's the Old Testament. That's the covenant that God made with his people, the covenant between him and the Israelites. However, when Christ came, all the old covenants were over. This is the new covenant, the relationship. He fulfilled all of that because we couldn't. We couldn't keep the law. We would have to do it like Paul is telling the Galatians here. You would have to keep it all, everything that it entails. We can't do that. We can't even follow a diet. How are we going to follow the law? Am I right about it this morning? Come on, somebody. It takes a lot. And if you're going to do a little bit, that's the leaven he's talking about. You got to do it all. God knew that he couldn't, but he had to make a covenant with his people to separate them from the Canaanites, the Amorites, and all of them to show that they are chosen by God. That was the old covenant. Jesus Christ is the new. Jesus Christ is the grace. What we have in the Old Testament is the law, but we've been brought from under that. However, in the lesson on today, the Galatian Jews were still practicing preaching and trying to teach others who confessed their hope in Christ, who came to believe in Christ by faith, that they too had to be circumcised. Say, what? Oh, no. This is what I got to do to be saved? This is what I got to do 
to have salvation? This is what I have to do to worship the Lord? No, because through Jesus Christ, we have the freedom, we have the love, and we have the faith. So that brings us back to the text on this morning once again. The right and the fight for freedom. Paul tells us that we have to stand fast in our liberty and our inheritance because it has been fulfilled in Christ. He told the people to stand fast in light of that liberty, not the liberty to sin. Now, you know, we gain this liberty in Jesus Christ. It was costly. We didn't pay anything, but Jesus did. It wasn't cheap because he gave his life for us to have this liberty, but not a liberty to sin again once we give ourselves to him. It was a result of a believer's life made new in Christ. Not to sin again, but we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. If you look at 1B, it says to be not entangled again. That means don't go back and do what you did before. Don't go try to do what you did under the law because there are limitations in that. But in Jesus Christ, you have liberty. You have freedom. You have the ability, the freedom to love our neighbors as ourselves, to love others. So, if we be circumcised, Paul says, it's going to profit you nothing. What is it going to change? Does it mean I'm going to accept the law, now I'm going to do what they say just to make sure that I'm saved? When Jesus already said, all you have to do is confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, you know, and you will be saved. So why am I going to go and be circumcised now? Because, see, now I got folk whispering in my ear. Now I got folk telling me I need to do some other things. So we get confused. We're no different from the Galatians because he, even today we've got so many different sects S-E-C-T-S, different divisions that's pulling people. We've got burning ears. We're listening to so much stuff that's pulling us away from the true word of God that's trying to get us under some man-made, some law that we have devised ourselves that has nothing to do with Jesus Christ who's already given us freedom, who's already given us liberty. Okay? So the Galatian... Jews said, be circumcised, all right? But it's not going to profit you anything, Paul says. The present tense in this, in, in, the new, in the King James Version, it says, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, if ye be means that they had not been circumcised yet. They were considering it because we've got these other Galatian Jews whispering in their ears saying, you got to do this to be able to do that. And that is not the case here. So again, if you're going to be a debtor and be circumcised, you have to be that to the whole law. Again, like I said, we can't, be, we can't practice uh, some of the things we choose to practice now because we cannot dedicate ourselves, our time, our mind, our focus to doing something to completion. We'll practice a little bit, exercise. Can't do it, can't disciple, can't get discipline my mind, my body, my will to get up and do it. So how am I going to achieve a goal if I got all of this to do that somebody has concocted with all these 2,000 diets and exercise programs, how am I going to practice a law that I was not born into when God made it easy for me by giving me a liberty to just love, to be free, to choose him above all else that's not going to do me any good whatsoever, okay? So, Paul says, I testify again in every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. If you're going to do a little bit, do it all. You just can't choose and pick and choose. I'm going to do this, and I'm good because it doesn't work that way. In verse 4, Paul reiterates a previous point. A person cannot be justified by both cross, Christ and the law. And I've read you the difference between the grace and the law. One is of God and one is of man. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve, okay? Only faith can bring justification. We find that in Romans. Only faith can justify us. If we look at verse 5, it says, The identifier here is a direct contrast to ye, falling from grace. It says here, For we through spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Okay? Again, Circumcision has no rule 
no right over anyone. So why do we go looking for other stuff? Okay, so if you give your life to Christ, here we got this law at Mount Zion. You got to come in on your hands and knees, lay down on the floor, confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You have to sit on the third pew on the right-hand side by 11 o'clock a.m. every morning or else you can't worship him. Who is that of? That's not of God. We've got free freedom, we've got liberty, we've got love. We make these things up thinking that it has to be a certain way for us to be a part of a church or a, let's go with denomination, okay? We've got a lot of different denominations and all of them are different in one way or the other. We all are Christians to a point, but to me what differs is love thy neighbor as thyself. So if I am justified by faith, if I have been saved by faith, why can I not love you as myself? Why do I have to make so many differences and not invite you into my life, my heart, my church? Because I don't believe the same thing you do, but we both believe in Jesus Christ. But I got a law. I got something written down that separates me from you. Let's look at Jehovah Witness. Oh, Jesus, Jehovah Witness, come to your door. Are you going to let them in? Jesus, you know, the word says, try to test the spirit by the spirit. Why are you going to let different spirits in your house? They don't believe in the Trinity. They don't believe that the God, the Son, God, the Father, God, the Holy Spirit, I want. The word doesn't use the word Trinity, but let's go to Genesis. What does it say? God talks about we. They don't believe the Holy Spirit is a person. Yes, it is the power of God, but that's it. They don't believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, that he was not one of two persons, that he was the Son of God, the same Son of Man at the same time. They just believe that he became God's Son, but he was born human. Yes, he was born human, but how was he born human? By the Spirit. What, you know, I don't know the story. Different beliefs. So I can't, we can't be Jehovah Witness because we don't have the same beliefs of how they interpret the scripture. But we all say we're Christians. The Galatian Jews were Christians, but they felt like you needed still to be circumcised. Jehovah Witnesses are Christians, but they've taken the word out of context. They have set up certain beliefs. I've had people that I've known who have died who family members were Jehovah Witnesses, and they didn't come to their mama, their brother, their sister funeral because they were Jehovah Witness, and they didn't feel they could step into your church because your beliefs were different. How is that loving your neighbor as yourself? How is that practicing the freedom and the liberty that Jesus Christ has given us by grace? Whose law are you under? Why are you practicing all of these things that will not get you into heaven? that does not confirm your righteousness or your relationship with Jesus Christ. That was just one. What about non-denominations? Non-denomination is a denomination because it's non-denominational. The, the difference is they say non-denomination because they're not affiliated with the Baptists or the National Baptist Convention. Convention. They're non-denominational because they're not affiliated with the United Methodist Church. They're non-denominational because they're not Church of God in Christ. But they're still a denomination unto themselves. So, you all follow me? You understand what I'm saying? You look at me, ooh, Jesus, don't look at me like that. That's best Patrice. She's looking at me with love. So, am I right? Am I wrong? Okay. You all, any comments? Okay, so we have these divisions. You have to not be affiliated with any other church or denomination to be non-denominational. We've got the full gospel Baptist church. A lot of Baptists broke away from the Baptist church. Rather than join a cultic church or non-denominational, it's a power struggle, everybody wanna be their own boss. They practice the same thing, speaking in tongues, baptism of the Holy Spirit. We may not practice it in the Baptist church, but that does not mean that we don't believe. 
that does not believe that some of us possess those gifts, that God has given us those gifts. So they all pretty much for gospel non-denomination Church of God in Christ. A lot of their um, tenets are somewhat of the same. They have the bishops and you know elders and those things, and they speak in tongues publicly. Now, there were one time that I was growing up, I don't know if they still do this, that you had, they would put you down there, put their hands on you, and you had to speak in tongues before you got up to be a part, to be saved. The word doesn't tell us that. And then, that frightens me, Charlotte, because if I get up speaking in tongues, I don't know if you can interpret or not, I can get up speaking anything, I can be speaking pig Latin. After K, I, B, E, D, A, spray, I'm saved, thanks be to God. Hello, somebody. I was just speaking pig Latin. E, they, I, pray, u, te, u's, che. I'm speaking in tongue, and I'm saying, and everybody gets shout. You know, I can't trust that of man, you know? <coughs> <coughs> and then the word says to know the spirit by the spirit, you know, unless you're coming in here. I don't know the spirit, all these hands on me. We have to be mindful of that. Let's base it on the word of God. Let's base it on the grace of God. Okay? It doesn't mean the Old Testament was wrong. No. God had to set in place for us. The law is to teach us the right and the wrong, to know what to do. Okay? So he made this covenant with the people. Now, Jesus Christ, again, is the new covenant. So we don't have to practice those things like we did before. Because what do we have now? We've got freedom in Jesus Christ. We've got love in Jesus Christ. And we've got liberty. There are no confinements. We don't have to uh, 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 do certain things. We don't have to go through the rites of passage to get to Christ. All we have to do is confess and believe. And we shall be saved. Okay? So yes, last week... We talked about being saved, being justified by faith, um, being joint heirs with Abraham by faith. Because there was only one seed and that was Isaac. So we are sons of Abraham by faith, not by the law, not by circumcision, but by the grace of God. And I can't believe I talk so fast, it's almost 9.30. We need to go to 10 o'clock. I'm too excited to sit down. I want somebody else to talk to. I want to hear what y'all got to say. What do you have to say on Facebook? Post it. Write it out. Share it with those who are watching and listening with you on this morning. Our obstacles to freedom is what the mandates that we allow others and ourselves to place on us. Test the word. Try the word. Test the spirit by the spirit. If the Bible didn't say it, why are you believing what other folks say? We've got the freedom. We are of the royal priesthood. We're all priesthood of believers. We have to study the word for ourselves. We can't be the Galatian Judaizers saying that we, uh, you have to do this and that. What they were doing in verse 8, the persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you, that's what I was just talking about. Paul called the persuasion of the Galatian Jews another gospel. Full gospel, another gospel. Jehovah Witness, another gospel. Because we want to have the different denominations of the different power structures. But once it comes out of the context of the word of God in the New Testament, which we are now under grace in, that's not of God. That's of mankind, with their own laws, their own mandates, their own rules and regulations for us to worship. We have liberty in Christ to worship freely. I don't have to speak in tongues first before I worship it. I don't have to speak in tongues first before I am saved. I don't have to, our men, our boys, do not have to be circumcised on the eighth day in order to be able to practice, to be able to believe, to be able to worship with liberty the Lord our God. Just a little bit. Verse 9, just a little bit of leaven, leaven the whole lump. Just a little bit spoils the rest. If 
you allowed a little bit of persuasion to take hold in your teaching, then you're going to allow a lot because there's going to be division. Now I believe in them. I, I just a little bit of what they say it sounds true, so I'm just going to I'm gonna practice that a little bit. Then before it's over, I'm practicing everything because you can't practice just a little. It's going to be all or nothing. We have to stand against the influence of other teachings. We have to have confidence like Paul had in the Galatian mindset toward faith, resulting in the positive reinforcement to motivate others like ourselves, to motivate children, to motivate those that we're witnessing, that it is by faith in Jesus Christ. Let me jump down to verse 15 so we can close out. I like this, what it says in 14 and 15. Uh, 14 says, if the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love that. It's only the law for all the law is fulfilled in one word. The law is fulfilled in one word. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as yourself. The law of Moses required so much. The law's teaching did not culminate in customs, rituals like circumcision. Instead, the law was fulfilled and found complete through a person's concern for others. So we can find that in Romans 13. Paul continues in the tradition of Jesus' ethical teaching, reminding believers then and reminding believers today of the importance to love your neighbor. Verse 15, I'm going to close out. Paul says, a tense conflict might lead a person to say or act in a manner that serves to, in a sense, eat up other people, cut other folk off. If believers are not filled with love, their actions may tear others down. If we start biting and devouring, attacking one another, that would result in destruction. But Paul said, look, I hope you be, you know, just cut off and ate up by what you think and what you feel, which is wrong, rather than trying to disaffect others, rather than trying to eliminate others, other than trying to make others feel bad because they didn't get circumcised, because they didn't crawl down, lay on the floor, speak in tongues, and sit on the third pool, pew and wear a wool coat 24 uh, hours a day. Hopefully, you will fall by the wayside, not those that you're trying to deter from the real gospel, which is by grace and your belief and your confession, which is in Jesus Christ. It does not require circumcision. It does not require what other people tell you that is not found in the word of God, especially if it does not give you freedom, if it does not allow you to love others as yourself, if it does not give you the liberty to love, it does not give you the liberty to, the liberty to worship or to accept the word of God as it is, rather than being watered down or confining you under a law rather than under grace. We thank God for you on this morning. I didn't pray to begin with because I prayed all the way here, but let us close out in prayer. I was so excited about jumping into the lesson. I said dive, and that's exactly what we did. So let us stop for a moment. We'll close out in prayer. But before I do that, I'd love to hear the voices of those that are in person on this morning. Does anyone have anything they want to add, comment on to the lesson about the lesson on today? I'm out to prayer. Look, I, I get excited, y'all. I am so sorry. I get excited about the word of God. Deeper, 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 deeper. And you all just sit and you understand me speaking in tongues and I go deeper, deeper. And I am so glad. <laughs> I am so glad you know the interpretation. Let us pray. Oh, God, we love you. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you, oh God, for the liberty to accept you. Thank you for the liberty to love. Thank you for the forgiveness of sin, oh God. Thank you for the, for the freedom that you've given us through your son, Jesus Christ. Oh God, we thank you now for the cross, the cost that, it, that was paid for us to be able to love, the freedom to worship you, and the liberty, oh God, to worship you without having to fall under the mandate of the law of others, oh God. Thank you for the new covenant with Jesus Christ. Thank you for the grace that we have it is in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for those, O oh God, who are outside of the ark of safety, those who have not come into the fold or confessed 
Oh God, please, we pray for witnesses because the harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. We pray for witnesses to let them know that all they need to do is to confess with their minds and believe in their heart that they will be saved because they are justified by faith. Thank you now for this lesson. Thank you for the participants on this morning. May we grow thereby. In Jesus' name, amen.